Good morning. All right, today we're going to attempt to do as much as we can of Ezekiel 40 to 48. Um, and I'm just going to see how it goes because there is a lot of um, information here um, and a lot of different viewpoints, but I've been doing a lot of research and I'm kind of going with the viewpoint of um, um, John Corson, which I, um, I love and I think that he really delves into the word um, has studied it for years, um, and so I'm taking um, pretty much his point of view. And then uh, David Jeremiah, another pastor I love, he his Bible that I use is uh, my commentary Bible, and his um, Bible commentary goes along exactly with John Corson. So I'm going to go with that point of view, but there are different perspectives when it comes to this temple that Ezekiel's talking about. It's called the Ezekiel Temple. Um, but like I said. Uh, my mind started just exploding with all the different um, um, thinking and everything. And so I'm just going to pray that the Lord kind of speaks to us. And I'm going to try to pull out what I learned from um, my commentary and from um, um, John Corson's teaching. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you and praise you for your word. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would speak to us through um, these last chapters of Ezekiel that we would hear the message you had um, for the people who were in captivity at this time. It was a message of hope and that we would have um, um, that same message of hope that is still today because this temple that um, Ezekiel is talking about, this temple temple is still to come and we will be witnesses to it, Lord Jesus. And, um, and so we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would give us um, ears and heart and minds um, and eyes even to understand um this word that you had for them and for us. We pray, Lord Jesus, that it would speak to our hearts. I pray that you would bring back to mind every single detail that you want us to know um, that, I, um, that I was able to take in, Lord Jesus. So bring back just those um, issues that you want us to hear. So I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would take over my mind, my heart, my spirit, my uh, mouth, and that you would speak through me. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you would just fill me with your Holy Spirit that you would cleanse me of all um, sin and unrighteousness, and that you would just um, use me as your mouthpiece. I just ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so I'm going to just kind of go through. We'll start in chapter 40. Now, this message from 40 to 48 is no longer talking about um, what was happening with the Babylonians and all that kind of stuff with the captivity. Ezekiel was going to be taken um, um, by the Spirit, and he was going to see into the Millennial Kingdom. So before I even start, I want to talk, what is the Millennial Kingdom? Okay, the Millennial Kingdom is a thousand-year reign when Jesus is going to reign um, on earth in Jerusalem. Um, as um, He's going to rule with a rod of iron. He is going to be um, our king here um, for a thousand years, and he's going to rule over the people and uh, over the nations. So when does the Millennial Kingdom start? It starts after the seven-year tribulation. So I'm going to do a quick little overview. Okay, right now, we're in the age of the Gentiles. We're waiting for the last Gentile um, or the last person to be saved. Okay, so if that's you, get saved. I'm just kidding. You guys are all saved. But anyways, go out there and share the word. Um, because when the last Gentile gets saved, okay, that's the end of the age of the, the Gentile generation. But um, what we're waiting for is the rapture of the church. And that can happen at any time. The rapture of the church, we've kind of gone over a little bit. It's in, um, I think, First and Second Thessalonians when Paul was talking to the, um, to the apostles because they had thought they had missed um, the rapture. But the rapture is when um, Jesus calls his church, the bride, home, okay? And so there's going to be a trumpet blast. This, um, we're gonna, um, he's going to appear in the clouds. He's not going to come down. He's just going to appear. Trumpet's going to blast. And believers, those who have Jesus and been sealed by the Holy Spirit, are going to be taken up to meet the Lord in the, um, the sky. And then... In First and Second Thessalonians, there's a message of hope for um, us who have lost loved ones, okay, who have um, been uh, people who have died in our um, in our family, friends who, had, who were believers in Jesus Christ. It says the dead in Christ will rise first. So those people, okay, are going to be there, rise first. Okay, they're already with Jesus, but they're going to be up in the clouds with Jesus. We're going to be caught up to meet Him in the sky, and in a twinkling of an eye, we're going to get our resurrected bodies. Those are the bodies that have no pain. Um, don't, no sags, uh, aren't overweight, uh, feeling great. We're going to get our resurrected bodies along with the people we've lost before. They're going to get the resurrected bodies and we're going to be with Jesus for seven years. It's called the um, wedding feast of the lamb. So for seven years, we're going to be in heaven with Jesus, um, having this wedding feast of the lamb. Meanwhile, down below on the earth for seven years and the seven years starts when the peace treaty is signed. 
when the peace treaty is signed between um, Israel and probably the Palestinians or the Middle East, um, it's going to be this two-state solution, and the Jews are going to get the right to rebuild the third temple, okay? And so for seven years, it's called the time of Jacob's trouble, the another name for the tribulation. Um, the Antichrist is going to rise, okay? And he's going to be a, a man who's going to come on the scene, mostly out of Europe is what they think, and he's going to be a charmer, charismatic. He's going to say, oh, I'm going to bring peace. He's going to be responsible for allowing them, the Jews to rebuild their third temple. And he's going to come on the scene and everybody's going to love him, okay? And he's going to be um, in charge of the one world order and a one world government, okay? Um, and a, a one world religion. A one world religion is going to arise and it's going to be led by his cohort um, called the false prophet. And the false prophet religion is going to be one that's all inclusive. Oh, everybody um, is um, okay. Everybody is a child of God. Um, everybody, um, you know, there's all roads um, that lead um, to heaven, or it's going to be like this new agey type religion. But every single person, um, every religion on the earth is going to be looking to this one religion. It's going to all kind of mingle under this leadership of the false um, um, prophet. Um, but what's going to happen is the false prophet is going to make everybody worship this Antichrist. And so at the three and a half year mark, the Antichrist is going to sit himself in this rebuilt temple. And the Jews are going to realize that he's not the Messiah they've been waiting for. And then all hell is going to break loose um, in this seven year tribulation. Um, and the Antichrist is going to go and he's going to, and that's what we've been le learning about, like the second Holocaust that's coming, where he's going to go and he's going to attack all of the um, Jews. One third is going to be saved and they're going to run in, they're going to hide in Petra. Um, but at this time, if people get saved because they're going to realize this guy's fake, I don't want to take the mark of the beast, we'll go over this all during Revelations. Um, but anyways, they don't want to worship the, um, this Antichrist guy. They're going to finally realize that, hey, I believe in Jesus that, You know, during the, the tribulation. If they get saved during this time, they're going to have to be beheaded. Okay, it's all in Revelations, we'll go over it. Um, and so you're going to be martyred at that time. So you, if you want to get saved, you got to get saved before the tribulation starts. You want to be raptured. You don't want to be here for the tribulation. Okay, so we'll skip forward. End of the seven-year tribulation. It's gotten horrible. Um, Antichrist is making war on everybody, killing people, having people beheaded. Finally, Jesus comes back at the end of the seven years. He sets foot on the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives splits. Okay? Powerful earthquake or just the power of God landing here on earth again. The Mount of Olives splits in Jerusalem and he comes to reign. He gets rid of the um, Antichrist. He destroys the Antichrist. He destroys the false prophet. Um, Satan himself is bound um, in the lake of, um, or in hell for a thousand years. Okay, so Satan will not be around for a thousand years. He'll be bound, okay? Um, and so for a thousand years, Jesus is going to reign from Jerusalem and it's called the millennial period. Okay, so anyway, so now we'll start 40 because now you guys kind of have an idea of what we're talking about. Okay, we're talking about the millennial period is what Jer um, Ezekiel is seeing. Okay, it says in the 25th year of our captivity at the beginning of the year on the 10th day of the month in the 14th year after the city was captured on the very same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and he took me there in the visions of God. Okay, he took me into the land of Israel and set me on a very high mountain. And on it, toward the south, was something like a structure of a city. So he's taken in the spirit into this vision, and he sees into what appears to be a city. And I'm going to skip to the very end of the book, because what it's called here, in the very end, the last verse of Ezekiel, um, it's the city, it says, and the name of the city from that day shall be the Lord is there. So that's going to be the name of the city. It's actually called Yahweh Shema. Um, it says the name of this millennial city will be the will be the Lord is there, Yahweh Shema, a tremendous promise given to the Hebrew exiles who must have wondered if the Lord will ever be with them again. Um, so that's what he sees. He sees this amazing city, and in the center of the city is this temple. Um, and the reason that the Lord gave um, Ezekiel this message one was for us to. Um, for our hope, but also because it says, Ezekiel received this vision about 573 BC, a little over one third of the way through the 70 years of captivity prophesied by Jeremiah. 
A dozen years after the destruction of Jerusalem, the exiles needed a fresh word of hope to keep them focused in a positive way on the future. They needed a reminder that God would indeed return them to the promised land, and Ezekiel's vision of a staggering new temple no doubt brought enormous encouragement to their da downcast hearts. So they were in a time of captivity, their, their temple's been destroyed, and they're in Bab Babylon, they're in captivity, their temple's been destroyed, they hear Jerusalem's been destroyed, um, and they're downcast. And so Ezekiel is given this message of really of hope to let them know that, hey, after 70 years are over, you're going back into your promised land. And this is a look at your future of this temple that's going to be, and the Lord himself will be in your midst. Um, so that's this message of hope, okay? It says, and I was, he saw a structure of a city. He took me there, and behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of bronze. He had a line of flats and a measuring rod in his hand, and he stood in the gateway. And the man said to me, Son of man, look with your eyes and hear with your ears and fix your mind on everything I show you. For you were brought here so that I might show them to you. Declare to the house of Israel everything you see. Okay? And so John Carson really said something very interesting when I was listening to this message um, a few days ago. Because a few days ago I was feeling kind of like, what am I doing um, like these, with these videos, you know? Um, is anybody, like... Is it reaching anybody? Am I not supposed to be doing this? And so anyways, I was having like this pity party. And so I'm listening to John Corson, you know, as I'm doing my stuff. And he goes over this scripture. Son of man, look with your eyes and hear with your ears. Fix your mind on everything I show you, for you were brought here so that I might show them to you. Declare to the house of Israel everything you see. And so anyways, he's, he's given this sermon on this on this scripture. And he says, um, uh, do you want more revelation from God? I'm like, yes. Do you want to know and understand more about the Bible? Yes. Okay, those John Corson asking, and he's asking his congregation as he's speaking. Do you want to get a deeper um, revelation? And I'm like, yes. And then he said, then share. He said, because that's what Ezekiel's, the message here, Ezekiel, is being told. Um, he's being told, I'm going to show you stuff, and I want you to share it. And so John Corson basically had this um, saying, and he goes, um, let me see if I can show it. Exact words, and I had to quote it. Um, do you want the Lord to show you my revelation to be faithful? Then be faithful to share what you already have. So John Carson said, the, what, be faithful to share what you already know. So if you know something about the Bible, then share it. Because if you want to know more, show more. Um, the more you show, show, the more you receive. And I thought, all right, Lord, as the answer to my, um, what I was calling out to you about, um, I want a deeper revelation of his word. I want to know more. I want to understand more. That means the Lord is telling me, share more. The more you share, the more you'll know. Um, because the more you give out, the more you'll get filled up. Um, and so that's a message for all of us. You will guys already know. Um, you've been studying for a long time. Um, and so you guys already know. Even if you only know the basics, share the basics. Because if you guys want a deeper understanding of the Bible, then take what you know and share it, and the Lord will give you more, okay? So be, be faithful to share what you know, give out to other people, and the Lord's going to give you more and more understanding of the Bible. And that's what Ezekiel was told. Uh, I'm going to show you all of this stuff so that you can declare to the people of Israel everything that you see, okay? So then that was a cool message on, on that. And then um, verse 40 continues, and it describes this new temple, um, that's going to be built. Now, this is a, the part that totally blew my mind, okay? This temple is a fourth temple. I didn't ever know we had four temples, okay? So the first temple was built by King um, David's son, King Solomon, okay? That was the first temple that they built. The glory of the Lord filled it. The Ark of the Covenant was there. Okay, so that was the first temple that was destroyed um, by the Babylonians that we just read about, Okay? The second temple is built when the, when the Israelites come back from cap, um, um, Tivity, um, the, the walls are rebuilt, they're allowed to rebuild the, um, the uh, second temple, but it's never done in the same glory of the first temple, you know? So it's another temple that's, it's a, you know, they rebuild a temple, but it's never at the same level as, as the first one. There's no Ark of the Covenant there, because the Ark's been taken. Um, and then it's called Herod's Temple, because Herod came in and tried to, like, spruce it up a little bit. Okay, so that's the second temple. That's the one that Jesus would go into. Um, and that temple was, was destroyed in 70 AD 
remember Jesus prophesied that the temple would be destroyed in 70 AD, and that temple was destroyed by the Roman, the Roman Empire. Okay, they came in and destroyed it. They have not had another temple um, in Jerusalem since that time. They go to the Wailing Wall to, at this day, but that's just a little portion of the wall that's been left, okay? So the Jews really want to build their set, third temple, okay? They have plans for it. They've built all of the utensils they need. They already pretty much have it in the works, okay? When this peace treaty for um, that starts at tribulation time comes about, they're going to get authorization to build their third temple. Now, from what I've studied before, it's going to be built um, in the in the original place where the, the first and second temple were at. It's going to be built next to the Dome of the Rock, I think. And because there's a scripture verse that says, where um, I think it's in the book of Revelations, where it says, don't measure the out of courtyard. When the third temple is built, don't measure, measure this out of third, um, courtyard because that's the court of the Gentiles and that's where the Dome of the Rock about well, is at. So the Lord is saying, it's okay that the Dome of the Rock, that's what I've heard, okay, um, is in the court of the Gentiles, okay? So that's my thinking has always been the third temple is going to be next to... Um, at this time of tribulation, next to the Dome of Rock, it's going to be, they're going to coexist, I guess you want to call it that, okay? Then the Antichrist goes in, he desecrates it, he, he demands to be worshipped from the third temple, um, and that's the, that's what I've always heard. Okay, well, this um, temple that Ezekiel's talking about is a fourth temple. This temple is different. The dimensions of this temple that he describes here are different from um, the original temple, Okay, it's bigger, it takes up more ground, there's no um, curtain that divides between the Holy of Holies and the people. Um, there's different things, in, um, different dimensions in this temple. So this is considered a fourth, a fourth temple that, that's going to be built for the youth by Jesus during the um, millennial period. So Jesus isn't going to use that third temple that the Antichrist um, desecrates. The Bible doesn't say what's going to happen to that third temple, um, and I don't know. Um, but this temple is different, and this temple is going to be the one that Jesus uses during the millennial period. And it makes sense he wouldn't use the one that the Antichrist desecrated. Um, and this is the one, this fourth temple where the Holy Spirit, or where the, the presence of the Lord is going to come back into. Um, so I don't know. So that was, that's interesting. I never knew that, that there was a fourth temple. Um, so I'm going to end there. I'm going to do like many, not many videos, but I'm going to end there. Um, and then we'll, I'll continue on another video, um, the rest of it. Okay. So Lord Jesus, we just thank you and praise you. We look forward to learning more about this third um, or this fourth temple that comes into play. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would um, explain to us um, just um, what you want us to know. And that we look forward to this time when you reign here on earth. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I'm going to attach a couple of videos that are 3D um, um, reenactments or whatever you want to call it, 3D um, pictures of this third temple. Okay. Love you guys. Bye. Or fourth temple. Bye.